Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Devs Play Games. My name is Eric Bloomquist. I made, well, I was one of the people that made this uh, game, The Song of Seven, the lead director, and I'm with these guys. Hey. Hi. It's, we, it's well, we their run, show. We run the show, <laughs> if you haven't seen us before. That was awesome, we should do that more often. <laughs> just have him on every episode from there on. Just be like, I don't even know what they're playing today, but here they are. I'll well, come hang out and play video games. We, that sounds we, awesome. We have a green screen. We can like get like default footage of him. Yeah, just what goes like, back there? Uh, it's the game footage, actually. Oh, sweet. So oh, we can, I mean, we're looking forward, but the game is behind us to you guys. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we can it's put right you, there. We can put you in the back. It'll be great. Uh, so via my request, we've returned back to town because I want to speak to some jangles. Okay, you don't want to talk to this guy specifically. You want to talk to yes. these guys. Nope, wrong one. The one at the bottom. This one? Yeah. Uh, do this it, guy. Do it. do it. Ready? Nice, Jandal. So the Jandals, there's a very specific story about them. In the prototype, <laughs> they were like uh, large bears. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, like we did bears two that you we had two prototypes, by the way. Oh. We had two prototypes that we spent a year on each. This this dev cycle was um, a little bit over a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you bit me with your mouth. You ready? And... All right. Oh, you must have already got the achievement, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I already got the achievement. But yeah, you get an achievement if you get... with your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so the Jandals, the, they got their names from our composer. His name is Jonathan Yandel, but we call him Jandal. Oh. So the reason, he he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met, but he always looks like he's really grumpy. I was going to say, <laughs> please tell me that their faces were modeled yeah, after okay, his. Almost completely. And he, yes. he has this just epic, beautiful beard. That's awesome. So we thought it would be really funny if we made them these like sheep-like characters that also looked really grumpy. <laughs> um, oh, that's amazing. And they sound grumpy, too. We were going to make uh, a secret area, uh, a Jandal Kingdom. <laughs> but it got it got cut just because it was like we were never gonna. There's get to always this. a it's chance. It's never too late. That. Well, DLC. Well, the the AK47 DLC is coming out later this year. <laughs> all right, all right. So perfect. maybe we'll add it. And you'll, get, you'll get a golden jandal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep a blood armor. <laughs> was there anything else you wanted me to show people from the village? Uh, press E for me. Oh yeah, we, we haven't, haven't talked, talked about this about yet. This. this is one of my favorite features, so and you've just blown past well, all of I, it. I, to be fair, I tried, but we were so involved at the time that I was like, okay, I'll come back to this. And here we are in episode three. So, uh, <laughs> a typical adventure game, especially click and point, the general idea is that you have to go around clicking on things until you find the thing you need to do the thing you have to do, um, in, in a nutshell. Problem with a lot of games is that you have no idea what you can interact with in a lot of them, but uh, part of that problem has been solved by being able to walk around and this nifty feature you put in where if you uh, press E on the keyboard, it will make it glow, and you'll be able to, in you know that you can interact with that that item in some way. It, it very much fixes the problem that you get out of a lot of like point and click adventures. Yes. Where it's like, I don't even know what's interactable. I felt actually very intelligent when I was explaining it to Rachel, my wife, because she was like, oh, why is that so important? I was like, because instead of having to find the answer, you have to figure out, or find the solution, you have to figure out the solution. I mean, literally, you mm -hmm. don't have to find it. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the overworld? I do Absolutely. Want to talk about the overworld. So, um, well, just to kind of touch upon that point, yeah, I, I don't like pixel hunting either. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like that's not really uh, fun. It's just tedious. It's time it, consuming. And a yeah. longer game does not make a better game. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. Ah. <laughs> that's a full design philosophy of the 90s, and it should have died there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and making the first level impossible. Or no, it was level two is impossible. Yeah. That was a yeah. thing that was specific. Remember, like Battletoads? And Ninja Turtles, remember the underwater level, and then Battletoads with the jumping over the, they always made it impossible. Uh, anyway. Lion King. Lion King, yes. Oh my god, the swinging, the... It's... <laughs> unless, unless you're obsessed like myself. <laughs> they didn't want, they didn't want the, the rental to, for you to be able to beat the entire game. Yeah, but they wanted the first level to be good enough that you were hooked on it. So I did this, the overworld, for two reasons. One, because I love overworlds <laughs> in games, because I, uh, you know, back to playing Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, um, it just makes the world feel bigger than it actually is, and it allows us to create uh, less jarring transitions without having to be like, okay, you're actually going to run from the village to this forest Stop area. By the village. 
It also gives you a sense of, um, like, I guess distance, right? Like, we know that these characters are larger than they actually are, so it actually kind of makes it feel like, you know, you're traversing this huge distance, a lot of time is probably passing. Right. Um, it's the same reason I, like, even the or over overworld in, um, like, Ocarina of Time, it doesn't feel like an overworld, but it still acts like one, and, and Absolutely. you really think about it, it's like, yes. wow, there's weeks probably passing in this journey. Oh, yeah. Actually, there's an interesting comparison I didn't think about until you said it. Final Fantasy VII. Very first time you take step out of Maker. <sighs> That's exactly what you kind of did here. Even It's even a spherical... Uh, or a, 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 oh yeah, my spherical god, thing you're that totally you right. stepped out of. <laughs> a walled-in city that you just walked out of that you are now experiencing the world for the first it's, time. It's not Midgar, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I mean, you know, with all the smokestacks and explosions going on now. <laughs> Um, there is there is one colors, other Final Fantasy way, VII reference them. in this game. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can pick up on it. I, mm. I probably can't because I I my experience with Final Fantasy VII was very distracted. Has it already happened? No. Well, then we can't. Talk. Yeah, I know. We can't mm. talk okay, that's fair. Later it's on, for you guess. guys to find then. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're in the woods. This is where things start to get really interesting too. Um, your, the, the way the characters move just really gets me. Just, like, taking a step back and, like, shaking like this and everything like that. Like, the characters' movements are a lot more, um, a bit more dramatic, which is actually a pantomiming technique. Oh, that's, that's the guy. Oh, yeah, you didn't. I, when I first saw him, I was like, okay, so this is a guy. And, and of course, my first instinct was, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go talk oh, to yeah. him. But of course, he's not going to be there. Of course, he's not there. <laughs> he's just standing there like, hey, <laughs> so I thought you wouldn't be coming back this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do want to talk about it before we're too far past it. I do really like the contrast. So we're presented the overworld and it's very beautiful. A lot it's, of pinks. It's... It's peaceful, it's beautiful, it's everything you would expect, like, the grass is greener on the other side to kind of reflect. And then we're immediately put into the woods where it's, like, stark contrast. This is everything you feared that the outside would right. be like. Yes. It um, actually used to be a lot scarier, um, but we didn't want to get too deep into that hmm. right away. That's, um, I think that's fair. Yeah, you don't want that contrast to be too sharp because all, all, the, all of a sudden it's like, it's wait, what game are we playing? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't... It reminded me a lot of, I, I don't know why, uh, God, a lot of Final Fantasy references today for me, Oops. but it uh, reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy VI when you're going through the Haunted Forest with the ghost train. Oh, yeah. It, it's not that it's necessarily, like, scary. It's spooky. It's it's just enough to make you a little uneasy, but still make you want to adventure, like, and actually explore it at the same time. Um and that's, as he said, part of the contrast. It's also, like, the, how the, the greenery around it, like, it's nothing seems dangerous. It just seems forbidden. There's hmm. this some familiarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Damn flowers. Yeah, so a big issue, or a challenge that I'll say that we had was, you know, talking about the first day in comparison to the second day. So as you guys know, this game is in basically two halves. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first day is all about you getting to know, like just exploring yourself. It's it's really like a glory. It's, it's a big prologue. <laughs> I love this little moment. So this grass is actually tasty. You guys chew on it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Edible, but not great, huh? You're always watching K K K and Bo K and, K and Bo Bo K. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to raid their garden. Admit it. Bleh. I like the subtle change in their tone when they say <laughs> "bear." Clever, but I don't believe you. I also know you want to headbutt Is Isley. Isley's latest work too. Listen, that little girl will hurt you if you mess with her. Bleh. <laughs> Channels, they don't they don't give a crap. <laughs> I'd think twice about messing with her, and I'm way smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Jandal. You win this round. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh. Good talk. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's a great title for that. Thank you. I, I have. I took a lot of pride in naming those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so in the, in the second, there's world building in the second half of the, of the game. And the first half is more introspective. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a little oh, bit wow. of world building, but we, we, I went back and started sprinkling some more world building in the, be, in the be, first half of the game. Because a lot of people will say, they're like, they're like, yeah, I enjoyed the first half, but once I got into the second half, mm. I really got hooked. Exactly what you said. Oh, yeah. Um, that is, I've heard that many times. I mean, and that, that's good if there's yes. that consistency. And two, this, the first and the second half do play differently. Like, it's obviously still the same game, but there are different challenges in front of you. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, I, I feel like there is a lot of world building in the in the first half now because, like, a lot of it is just introducing the village and kind of, like, the behavior of, of everyone. And so I think that sets it up to show, like, the st- the contrast between, like, the village setting and the rest of the world. Yes. So there's there's definitely world building in both parts. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just about there for the question of the day. And I'm going to let you ask this one, but I'm at least going to give you okay. like an idea <laughs> uh, an idea for it. Uh, tell, give us a question about um, the world map. Because that was like one of your babies. Hmm. The, like the overworld? Yeah, yeah. Or, because there actually is a world map. Oh, I didn't know that. No, like a legit, a legit world map. So I was just trying to make sure. Oh, right mm-hmm. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of question? Like, what's? Can you give me a little more context. Like, what, uh, I don't uh, know. Uh, uh, you could. I mean, just ask something as simple as. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, here we um, go. see. So, uh, as designers, how do you feel about overworlds? Or, you know, how would you how would you tackle if you're a small team making your world feel bigger than it actually is? That's great. Mm. You didn't need my help on that. <laughs> I'll just leave. <laughs> God. I am a teacher. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> well, that's cool. about, that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> I think that pretty much just wraps that one up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll uh, see you guys next time. Make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Also, follow this guy on the, the link below. We'll give on you the all the Twitters. The, the Twitters. We'll give you all the information there. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>